Hello, this is Mike. Uh, just doing a quick video to show you some of the experiments I'm doing with the Commodore PET and the RGB to HDMI device. Uh, those of you interested in vintage computing stuff have probably heard about RGB to HDMI at this point. And uh, the RGB to HDMI is basically a project that lets you use a Raspberry Pi to uh, digitize um, analog and digital RGB signals from various computers and output to HDMI directly, uh, which is very convenient. Um, and I wanted to give it a shot with the Commodore PET, um, specifically because I was doing a lot of testing on this PET for uh, the Romulator device and the PET Disk Max device. And I didn't really like the idea that I was turning the CRT on and off over and over again. Uh, it basically wears it out, so I didn't want to age that CRT unnecessarily uh, just from going through testing for various things. So I uh, went ahead and tried to make up a little board, which is, this is a very, the very first version of it here uh, in the, on a proto board, but basically takes the video signals out of the uh, user port on the PET and uh, brings it out to the RGB to HDMI. And let's just give it a shot. So I've actually unplugged the CRT completely from inside the housing. So it's not being, it's not even being powered up when the computer is turned on. So here we go. So you can see that it uh, does come up. You might be wondering what this this thing is here, made out of cardboard, but uh, basically this is a cheap LCD panel I got uh, a while ago, and it was basically just the panel and the, there's a, you can't see much, there's a control board back here, and a little uh, control panel cable thing that comes out, but I just cut up some cardboard and taped, to get, taped it together and gave it a little little foot on the back here so it can stand up. So this is my uh, super cheap, uh, you know, occasional vintage computer display. And it's pretty convenient because it does have, uh, has VGA, has composite, and it does have HDMI. So right now I'm connected, the HDMI is connected to the RGB to HDMI, and I'm getting the signal out of the PET 2001. Uh, this is the 2001N. Um, so I'm just going to show you a little bit more about the actual video signals that come out of the PET and how how this works. Okay, the PET is turned on now. We're still getting the uh, video signal here through the RGB to HDMI. And I have hooked up my uh, USB logic analyzer here to the uh, video signals coming out of the user port on the PET. And uh, there's three things that we care about that are on that user port right now. There's a vertical sync, there's a horizontal sync, and then there is the video signal itself. So let's go look at what that looks like on the, uh, on the scope. All right, so now we can get this in a better view here. There we go. So uh, let's see the channel one. The channel one is the vertical sync. The channel zero is the horizontal, so that is every line. You get uh, you get one pulse there, and then channel two is the video signal itself. So uh, let's see, if I adjust the triggering here. I'm triggering on the end of the V-Sync, and let's, uh, let's add a little hold off. You might be able to see something. There we go, I think I... Yeah, you can see individual lines of video there. That's near the top of the screen, um, and that's where the that's where the text is right now. So that's why you see some uh, some video moving around. And this is a TTL digital video signal. It's five volts or zero, and uh, it's monochrome. So uh, we're just talking about black or green in the case of the the pet. Um, so what you need is you need the vertical sync and the horizontal sync and the video to go into the RGB to HDMI. Um, 
And so what I tried first was I tried uh, hooking this up separately. I tried hooking up the H-Sync and the V-Sync up to their individual pins like they are in the HDMI, uh, RGB to HDMI. And I couldn't, I could not get it to work. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't work. It seems like it should be able to. Um, but what I did was I took the vertical sync and the horizontal sync and combined it into a composite sync signal. Here's the uh, schematic for this uh, adapter board that will be coming soon. Um, you can see this is the 74, these are the gates of the 74 LSO2 NOR gate. Uh, V-Sync has the option of being inverted or not inverted. This is a little more flexible than it needs to be. H-Sync can be inverted or not inverted. And then they're combined. Uh, they're combined with this gate here into the C-Sync signal. Well, here I've hooked up the uh, scope to the uh, composite sync signal, which is this channel three signal. And you can see that it is effectively a combination of V-Sync and H-Sync. Uh, let's look a little closer at that. Uh, in addition, the uh, it also uh, inverts the uh, horizontal sync signal. I believe in this case, yeah, V-Sync, is low during the V-sync, the V-blank period, and uh, it looks like H-sync is inverted with respect to that. So H-sync goes high during the, uh, at the start of each line. So inverted that, um, so the, so they, now they both are, they both go to zero during their active period. Oops, my finger's in there. Um, so there you have the composite sync signal and that's what's fed into the RGB to HDMI. Oops, uh, where's the menu here? I don't want to enable Genlock. Okay, well, now I've done it. <laughs> okay, main menu. Uh, that's the geometry menu here. Uh, is that it? No. So on the geometry menu, This is inverted sync. Yeah, inverted sync. And the rest kind of took care of itself. Uh, I did set the, the, this is a custom profile in the RGB to HDMI. I, this, I set the uh, horizontal width to 640. It's basically doubled because the real resolution on this is 320 by 200. I'm going to do some experiments with this. Right now it works on the 2001. I'm going to try, try it on the, uh, PET 8032, um, which has a slightly different video output. I know that the uh, polarity of one of the sync signals is different, and it's also a different frequency. It's not, um, the PET 2001 is pretty close to a NTSC signal. And in fact, there is a, uh, there's a schematic out there for a uh, PET TV output. I believe it was the PET Users Group of England that made that schematic. Um, this is loosely, you know, inspired by that, but I also use a 74 LSO2 to invert the signal and uh, combine it into one, which, and that actually works. I, I built that one and that works on a, it worked on, on a uh, old CRT, like an Apple, um, an Apple monitor it worked on, but on a uh, modern composite input, it just would not sync. So uh, that's, that's part of the inspiration for doing this. But anyway, I'll post the schematic for that, um, this adapter board here. I'm going to I'm having a few of the PCBs made up, and you know if it works out well, then uh, I might you know, fine tune that a little bit and uh, have that be something that you can uh, just grab the Gerbers for and make yourself if you like. But uh, anyway, thanks for checking this out, and I'm very excited to have a HDMI output from the Commodore PET.